Hey guys, my name's Eth Goes Boom and welcome to a new video. So you guys responded really well to my last list video, which was the top 10 most annoying FNAF characters, so I thought I'd make another one, and there was one idea in particular that you guys were really, really requesting a lot, and that is the top 5 most underrated FNAF characters. And that's a really cool topic in my opinion. I kind of like looking into characters that aren't really featured in series that often. You know, the kind of minor and background characters. And in the vast, vast universe of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, and even the Five Nights at Freddy's books, there are many, many characters, some more memorable than others, and some way more overused than others, and just some that are kind of left in the background. And those are the ones that we're going to look into today. And uh, yeah, guys, so uh, like my last video, this list is not going to be in any particular order. So uh, yeah, let's just jump straight in and let's do this. All right. Number five. Yendo from Sister Location. Now, Yendo is a very interesting character indeed, and honestly, I kind of wish we knew more about him because he seems like the kind of character that could reveal a bunch of lore for the series, but he's never appeared outside of Sister Location, and we've never really been given any context on his character, except for some very, very, very subtle hints. So, Yendo first appears in Night 3 of Sister Location, where he has a very, very rare chance of appearing as an Easter egg. So you guys may or may not remember, but in Night 3 of Sister Location, you have to walk through the Funtime Auditorium and flash your beacon to make sure you don't run into Funtime Foxy. Now, every now and then when you flash the beacon, you might see Funtime Foxy in front of you, and when that happens, you have to make sure that you stop and don't keep going, because if you do, Funtime Foxy is going to kill you. Now, on very, very rare occasions, Yendo can actually appear in place of Funtime Foxy as an Easter egg, and uh, fun fact, if you keep moving, uh, when you see Yendo, you'll get jump scared and killed by Funtime Foxy regardless, so if you see him, make sure you stop, just like you would if you saw Funtime Foxy, but yeah. Outside of that little easter egg appearance, a Yendo finally got to appear as a main enemy in Custom Night, so when the main game first came out, he was only an easter egg character, but I guess Scott needed to fill up all the slots for Custom Night, and he needed 10 characters, so he figured, uh, heck, why not use the easter egg characters like Yendo and Lolbit? And Custom Night is very interesting, because even though it's not not canon, supposedly, uh, Yendo has an almost identical AI to Golden Freddy. Like, he basically appears in the office randomly, when you lift up the monitor, lift it back down again, and in order to make him go away, you have to put the monitor back up again, just like you would with Golden Freddy. So, that's very interesting, like, is that supposed to show that there's some kind of connection between Yendo and Golden Freddy? I mean, a lot of people speculate that Yendo's name is short for Yellow Endo, and, uh, fun fact, Golden Freddy's original name in the series was Yellow Bear before the fans kind of kept calling him Golden Freddy, and Scott thus changed his name to Golden Freddy, he was originally referred to as Yellow Bear, so if Yendo is Yellow Endo, does that mean there's some kind of connection between Yendo and Golden Freddy? I always kind of thought that Yendo was like an endoskeleton for maybe a Funtime Fredbear or something like that, maybe a Funtime Fredbear exists in some place in the FNAF universe, who knows, but that's just my speculation. So yeah, so outside of Night 3 and Custom Night, Yendo has never appeared in any other FNAF game, he didn't make any appearance in Ultimate Custom Night, but interestingly enough, he actually did appear on one piece of Funko merch as a little model, and I actually have this model too, it's pretty cool, and I think maybe they only made a Yendo one because they needed to fill as many characters as possible and make, like, as many models as they could, I don't know, just to fill the quota, I suppose. But yeah, besides just the location and this one little piece of merch, Yendo's never been used for anything, which is kind of weird because, you know, like I said, he could potentially be very important to the series story-wise, but oh well. So that's the end though, everybody. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Number four, Pan Stan from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. Ah yes, Pan Stan, the forgotten member of Trash in the gang. <laughs> so a lot of you guys might have guessed that Pan Stan would be on this list, and I'm going to explain why, but basically, Pan Stan, along with the rest of the Trash in the gang, made his first appearance in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, also known as FNAF 6, and uh, unlike the rest of the Trash in the gang, this is the only game in which he appears, which is kind of weird because the rest of the Trash in the 
gang members like uh, Number One Crate, Bucket Bob, uh, Mr. Can Do, and Mr. Hugs. They all made later appearances in Ultimate Custom Night, but Pan Stan was completely forgotten and not included at all. And there's no real reason for it. Like, three of the members of Trash and the Gang, which is Number One Crate, Bucket Bob, and Mr. Can Do, they were featured all as one enemy in Ultimate Custom Night. They were kind of like the troll enemy that whispers to you and then jump scares you out of nowhere. And Mr. Can Do has this thing where he blocks your cams. And uh, Mr. Hugs also appears as part of Toy Freddy's AI. And actually, it's kind of weird because Mr. Hugs appears in two places in Ultimate Custom Night. He appears as Toy Freddy's AI behavior, basically. And he also appears on one of the cams as a decoration. And I don't understand this at all because Pan Stan should have been featured on that cam instead of Mr. Hugs. Like, it seems like Scott could have easily done that and included all of the members of Trash in the gang. Like, I don't really understand why he had to make Mr. Hugs appear in two places in the one game, but oh well, whatever. So as a result, Pan Stan was left behind, but uh, he originally came from, you know, FNAF 6, where he appears in Dumpster Diver Weekly, <laughs> which is the very first catalog that you get access to when you start up Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. And as long as you buy one of the stages for your pizzeria, Pan Stan is basically available from the beginning of the game. He's locked until you buy a stage, but as long as you get one, which isn't too hard because you're given plenty of money when the game begins, you should be able to buy him and uh, any other trash of the gang members that you can afford or any other pizzeria decoration. So, uh, I believe his stats are pretty, like, simple. He only has one point for entertainment and that's it. But, uh, he isn't a threat to your pizzeria like Mr. Hugs can be. So, yeah, Pan Stan is a pretty small role in the game. He's most likely one of the first animatronics that you're going to buy. And I use that term loosely, animatronics. He's not really an animatronic. He's kind of like a, a wannabe trash animatronic, I guess. But, you know, once you get more money and access to more animatronics, Pan Stan and the rest of the trash animatronics are going to be replaced with new and better animatronics. So yeah, so Pan Stan only appears as a catalog buyable animatronic in FNAF 6 and has never appeared again. He's never appeared in any merch and is highly underrated to be honest. I think there was quite an outcry among the fans though uh, during the production and even after the release of Ultimate Custom Night because a lot of people were really annoyed that Pan Stan wasn't included for some weird reason but the other trash animatronics were. I mean, it wouldn't have been that hard to make Pan Stan a decoration in the background or even in one of the offices but uh, uh, who knows, maybe there's a reason why Pan Stan wasn't included. Maybe he's uh, hiding in the shadow and biding his time. <laughs> who knows, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see uh, Pan Stan in the future and the rest of the trash and the gang animatronics as well. Alright, on to the next character. Number three. Endo Plush from FNAF World. Now, Endo Plush is one of the many unlockable and playable characters in FNAF World. Uh, he's one of the characters that you're going to unlock, like, around midway through the game, like in one of the mine areas. And uh, he's an alright character to use. Uh, he's pretty deadly in the right hands. Uh, his moves are Neon Wall, Eye Beam, and Water Hose 2. Uh, Water Hose 2 in particular is a good move for getting rid of, like, a group of really weak enemies. But a lot of people were really confused about this character when we first saw him because Endo Plush is the only playable character in FNAF World that isn't a character from, you know, FNAF 1 to 4. Any of the previous FNAF games before FNAF World. So people didn't know what the deal was with this character. Well, until FNAF World came out, that is. As you guys may remember, like, each character has their own loading screen in FNAF World. And on Endo Plush's loading screen, it says because character quota. Now what this means is that Endo Plush was only created and only put in the game because Scott basically needed an extra character. Like, I believe before update 2 came out, there was 40 characters in FNAF World and Scott most likely had 39 characters that he could use. And when he came to the 40th slot, he realized, well, I'm gonna have to make up a new character. Otherwise it's gonna be like an uneven number. So he decided to come up with a new character. And what he came up with was, uh, Endo Plush, I guess. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of weird because Endo Plush has never appeared in any game outside of FNAF World, and he's never appeared on any merch. He's quite an obscure character, and I'm sure most people have probably completely forgotten about him. And honestly, I kind of expected Endo Plush to appear as like an Easter egg in a future FNAF game. I kind of thought he was going to appear in this location as maybe like one of the Easter eggs or something, but no, we haven't seen anything of Endo Plush since FNAF World. And because he's such an obscure and unimportant character, it's it's highly unlikely that we're ever going to see anything from him again, unless for some reason Scott makes another FNAF World themed game. 
but come on, what are the chances of that happening, right? So, we're most likely never going to see Eno Plush again, but regardless, he's a pretty cool character. Number 2. BD Bab and Electro Bab from Sister Location. Now, you guys might disagree with me that BD Bab and Electro Bab are underrated characters, but in my opinion, the teasers and trailer of Sister Location made it seem like the BD Babs were going to be a really important character in the story, but in my opinion, they were vastly underused. And I think that the BD Babs should have been used way more in Sister Location because we had that really cool Sister Location teaser where there was like a picture of seven BD Babs, and then in the Sister Location trailer on Scott. Cawthon's YouTube page, in the background you can constantly hear Biddy Bab saying don't hold it against us, don't hold it against us, and you don't know what we've been through, but in the full game, before Custom Night came out, Biddy Bab only ever appeared in Night 2, which is kind of weird, I mean, Biddy Bab can also appear in various locations of the game as an easter egg, but as an actual enemy, an actual impact on the story, Biddy Bab, or at least two Biddy Babs, only appear as an enemy on Night 2, in that first section where you need to hide underneath the desk and it kind of seems like the Biddy Babs have some kind of role in the location like lore wise like maybe they're Circus Baby's little minions or something or that they're kind of afraid of her but after night two we never see the Biddy Babs again even though one of them says we'll see you again soon now that might have been foreshadowing for the custom night which is not in canon but still but it's just kind of disappointing that we never ever see the Biddy Babs ever again because even with the mini arenas even though the only enemies in Night 4 before Custom Night came out, we see the mini arenas quite a few times in the game, like in that really weird part where they dismantle Ballora and stuff like that, but the BD Babs only appear on Night 2 and you only see them if you manage to get jump scared by them. <laughs> I mean, if you're not an idiot and you manage to easily beat the Night 2 first section, like, you're never going to see the Biddy Babs at all. It's kind of a waste, and it kind of seems like Scott was going to do more with them, because that teaser did show that there was, like, seven of them, but we only ever see two in the game. There's the two that talk to us in Night 2, and then there's two in Custom Night, Biddy Bab and Electro Bab. Like, I like to think that the second Biddy Bab in Night 2 was probably Electro Bab, so yeah. <laughs> so for some reason, there's only ever two Biddy Babs, and even in the extras menu on Circus Baby's image, you see two Biddy Babs as well, so maybe it was a scrapped concept that there was meant to be a lot of Biddy Babs, and maybe there were an enemy that kind of worked together to defeat you, but in the main game, for whatever reason, there's only two of them, so that's kind of disappointing. Like, I'd like to see the Biddy Babs used a bit more in a future game, but let's face it, that's very highly unlikely, and even at Ultimate Custom Mode, the Biddy Babs didn't come back as an enemy, which is very, very disappointing because unlike all the Freddy and Bonnie and Chica and Foxy clones in the game, Biddy Bab is quite a unique character, kind of like Mini Rena, so it seems like a bit of a waste that Biddy Bab wasn't reused in Ultimate Custom Night, even as like a Deedee enemy or something, like that would have been really cool, like I'm really happy that the Mini Rena's got to be a Deedee character, but the Biddy Babs are kind of left out, like one of the Biddy Babs appears as like a decoration in the Sis Location office in Ultimate Custom Night, but besides that there's no sign of the Biddy Babs anywhere in the game, and to me that just seems like a missed opportunity, so I just I just feel like the Biddy Babs are underrated in the way that they weren't used to their fullest potential. Like in my opinion in Sis Location and even in Ultimate Custom Night, the Biddy Babs should have been used way, way more because they're pretty creepy characters and I don't know, I just kind of feel like that they could have made a way bigger impact on the series than they ended up having, but uh, oh well, what can you do? Alright guys, so before we go to number one, I've got some honorable mentions that I'd like to list and unlike the previous video, I actually have a few characters to mention this time. So. First of all, Mendo from FNAF World. So, Mendo is the shopkeeper in FNAF World that runs the uh, Endo Upgrade Store. But unlike the other shopkeepers in FNAF World, which is Lolbit and Didi, Mendo has never made an appearance outside of FNAF World. And just unlike Lolbit and Didi, Mendo has never really gotten any love from Scott or from the community. So, maybe in the future, Mendo will make an appearance in a game. I mean, Lolbit and Didi did in Sis Location and Ultimate Custom Night. So, who knows? Maybe Mendo will make an appearance in the future. Who knows? Okay, next. Next up, uh, Little Joe from Sister Location. <laughs> now, a lot of you guys might not even know who Little Joe is, but basically, he's the little doll that appears in the Circus Gallery in Sister Location. And he also makes an appearance in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator as the mascot for Lally's Lollies. Now, you guys might be asking, well, Eth, how do you know this character's name is Little Joe? Well, in some FNAF anniversary images a while back, I can't remember if it was from last year or the year before, but Scott released some images, and one of them was behind the scenes image
footage of basically the modeling of Little Joe, and the name of the image featuring him was called Little Joe, hence revealing his name as Little Joe. And also this character has been featured on some FNAF merch, which is kind of weird considering that all he does as a character is sit in the circus gallery and sister location and be a mascot for Lally's Lollies and FNAF 6, and that's all he really does, he's never really done anything else in the series, which was kind of weird because I remember when Sister Location first came out, I actually thought this character was going to do something in the game. I thought like the doll that you see in Circus Gallery was like the representation of a character that was going to be like an enemy or something, but it wasn't. So like, why does he appear in Sister Location when he doesn't really do anything? It's kind of weird. I guess he's just like a bit of a background character. But yeah, I'd really like to see little Joe maybe be an enemy in a future game. That would be really cool. Okay, and for the last honorable mention, Magician from Sister Location. Now, there's not much to say about Magician. He's very similar to little Joe in terms of characterization. Uh, he appears in this location once again in the Circus Gallery, very close to Little Joe, and he also appears in one of the offices in Ultimate Custom Night, uh, the sister location office I believe, as a, a prop in the background. But besides that, Magician doesn't really do anything in the series, and just like Little Joe, uh, Magician's name was revealed in an anniversary image, which was a behind the scenes thing showing his modeling basically. So that's where we get his name and Little Joe's name from. But these two are really cool little characters, like I really like their designs, I mean, Little Joe kind of looks like a BB variation, and Magician kind of looks like a human Orville elephant, <laughs> because they're both magicians, right? So maybe uh, they'll make an appearance in the future as uh, more important characters. That'd be really cool. And also, just like Little Joe, uh, Magician has been featured on some merch, which is kind of weird. Again, they're very minor characters, but have been merch for some reason. Like, no one really knows who these characters are, but they've been featured anyway, but oh well, what does it matter? Okay, guys, let's go on to the final character. Number one. Spring Bonnie from uh, FNAF 3 and 4 and FNAF World, I guess. Now, out of all of the characters on this list, I feel like Spring Bonnie is the most deserving to be on it because, seriously, Spring Bonnie is an incredibly underrated character. Maybe not by the fan base, but just by his representation in the game series itself. Now, Spring Bonnie is a really weird character because even though he exists in the series and he's actually appeared in quite a few games, we've never gotten a real look at the character itself. We know it exists, but we've never actually seen him and that's because he's only ever appeared in mini games and also as his adventure form in FNAF world and also when I talk about spring Bonnie I don't mean spring trap like in my opinion spring Bonnie and spring trap are two different characters spring trap is basically purple guy trapped inside a spring lock spring Bonnie suit but when I say spring Bonnie I mean like the actual animatronic the one that you see on stage in Final Fantasy Freddy's 4 that's what I mean not the spring lock suit that the employees wear I'm talking about the actual animatronic animatronic. Kind of like the Fredbear one that you see on stage. The one that bit the child, you know. So basically with Spring Bonnie, he made his first appearance in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 in the Stage 01 Golden Freddy minigame. You can see Spring Bonnie on stage with Fredbear or Golden Freddy, whatever you want to call him, and they basically just dance around as you try to navigate through the minigame. And that's basically it. That's all we see from Spring Bonnie in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3, once again not counting Spring Trap. And then Spring Bonnie appears once again in Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, despite the fact that that game like is centered heavily around Fredbear's family diner. We only see Spring Bonnie a handful of times. We see him once on the stage where he's kind of shadowed and a bit darker than he normally looks. Like he doesn't really look golden. He looks more like a brownish color. And I think that's because of the lighting probably because he's supposed to be facing away from the stage. And also we see some spare Spring Bonnie suits in the, uh, I guess it's the parts and services room of Fredbear's family diner in another mini game. And this Spring Bonnie looks very weird because it looks like a golden toy Bonnie, which is kind of weird, so I don't know if there's like different Spring Bonnies, and they all look different from each other, because Spring Trap, for example, he looks nothing like any of the Spring Bonnies that we see in the mini games, and he also doesn't look like Spring Bonnie from FNAF World, so I'm starting to think that there's many different Spring Bonnies. There's one that looks like a golden toy Bonnie, there's Spring Trap, and then maybe one or two other ones, but yeah. And then after Fun Out to Freddy's 4, Spring Bonnie finally makes kind of a real appearance in FNAF World as Adventure Spring Bonnie, but this still doesn't really count because this is Adventure Spring Bonnie, not the real Spring Bonnie. We've still never seen what Spring Bonnie really looks like, which is kind of weird. And it was kind of the same thing with Fredbear 2 at first, but since then, we've seen a lot more of Fredbear. I mean, we've seen Nightmare Fredbear in Final Fantasy 4, and we finally got a good look at Fredbear in Ultimate Custom Night, and also there was a Fredbear in FNAF World. And it's pretty obvious at this point that Fredbear is Golden Freddy, so 
Technically, we've seen Fredbear in a lot of games, and he's been mentioned in ones like Fun and Freddy's 2, but Spring Bonnie is a much more mysterious character, and we've never gotten a good look at him. Now, I don't know if this is true, but when the Fredbear teaser for Ultimate Custom Night came out, some of my friends were telling me that in the source code, it said something like, the bunny will come back or something like that, so kind of hinting that Spring Bonnie will return in some fashion. So I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. That probably means that Spring Bonnie is going to be revealed as an ultimate custom night enemy, but that never ended up happening. So I don't know 100% if that's true or not, but that might be a hint that in the next game, it's going to be centered around Fredbear and Spring Bonnie finally, which is something that people have been asking for since Final Fantasy Freddy's 3. And uh, I'm pretty sure Scott did hint at one point that Fredbear is definitely going to return in the future. So if Fredbear returns, I'd really like to finally see the real Spring Bonnie. That would be awesome. And because Spring Bonnie is such a mysterious and barely appearing character in the series, despite his presence in it, and the fact that there's been no Spring Bonnie merch, and a lot of people in the fan base tend to forget about him. I mean, a lot of people do remember Spring Bonnie and really want to see him, but to be honest, he's a very forgettable character, mostly because he's pretty much non-existent in most of the games. But yeah, okay guys, so that was my top five most underrated FNAF characters list guys uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree with my list or if you feel like there's uh, any other characters that should have been included and uh, yeah alright guys so uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it please subscribe to see more videos from me and also let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions for future lists and I'll see you guys next time bye everyone